So if we were focusing on um, a cylinder with a capital R radius, how would we figure out its volume? The volume of a cylinder. So that's the area of the base times the height. I think you might have been trying to use a kind of circumference formula here, where what we really need is the area of the base times the height. So this will be pi times the radius squared times the height. Yeah, you can always find those formulas in the back of your textbook. This would be a good formula to put in your cheat sheet uh, for the test. Yeah. Okay. Um. So what should I plug in down here? What should I plug in? So for this ratio, what should I plug in for the radius? Right, what I was trying to do here was a ratio that involved the entire radius. And what should we plug in for the height? Um, L. Yeah, in this case, the height is this horizontal component. And now in our proportion, we want to compare that to our actual Gaussian cylinder, which has a radius of just little r. Mm -hmm. um, well, what should I plug in up here? Well, this is the unknown. This is the total amount of charge that's enclosed by the Gaussian cylinder that we don't know. And what can we plug in down here? Um, that's pi little r squared times l. Now we're dealing with the smaller radius. But we're still going to deal with a cylinder that has the same length as before. All right, now we need to solve this for the enclosed charge. All that work here was so that we could get a number for this enclosed charge. Right, and we can simplify this formula. This is really the enclosed charge times 1 over epsilon. That way we can avoid getting a fraction inside the fraction. Now what?
epsilon zero. Okay, good. Good. So what's the answer to part A? Now, sometimes we describe the direction with signs, but like you said, in this case, they haven't given us a positive direction, so it would be much better to describe the direction here in words. Uh, I think you already had described the direction, that it's pointing radially. Now, in this case, they didn't even tell us if this was positive or negative, um, so we'll have to make an assumption. So let's assume that this is positively charged. If this is positively charged, are the electric field vectors pointing away from the center line or towards the center line? So if we assume that it's positively charged, all these electric field vectors are pointing away from this center line. That's both inside and outside the cylinder. The electric field vectors will be pointing radially away, like I've drawn them, away from the center line. They'd also be pointing uh, away in the third dimension as well, but it, yeah, I can't really draw that on the board. So they're draw, uh, pointing radially away from that. All right, well, this is already pretty hard. Um, so what were the things that were difficult for us here? Well, first of all, even though this is a three-dimensional shape, we can still characterize the charge with a linear charge density. What this is telling us is that if we take one meter of the cylinder, the total charge in the three-dimensional cylinder with a length of one meter would be lambda. So we don't need to make any adjustments here for going from, say, one dimension to three dimensions or anything. This will just be lambda times the length that we're focusing on. Uh, and that will give us the charge that we care about. What we did have to make an adjustment for is that our cylinder, our Gaussian cylinder, was only part of the main cylinder. So we had to set up this proportion. And down here, we had to realize that the actual amount of charge does depend on volume. It would be easy to get confused about that because we've just been working with a linear density over here. But when you're making these proportions, you pretty much always work with volume. Um, so we had to do one ratio for the entire cylinder of length L and radius capital R, and another ratio for the smaller cylinder of length L and radius little r. I think you're getting pretty good at setting up those ratios. Then there was uh, some algebra that we had to, uh, to go through here. Okay, good. And uh, you did a good job of not getting confused about the difference between little r and big r. That messes people up, so it's good that you're uh, clear about that. Okay, so then we're ready for part B if you're ready. Okay. Um, so now if I the direction of the electric Oh, when R is Let me uh, get cut up with you here. So what did you put in for the area? Oh, sorry. 2 pi r l. Uh, capital R, lowercase r. Little r. 
Yeah, this area refers to the area of the Gaussian surface. So that's the area of our dashed Gaussian surface, which has a radius of little r. And we learned that the volume of those cylinders is, oh no, we learned that the, the side area of those cylinders is 2 pi r. And again, we're assuming a length of little l. All right, good.